How you doing everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Shoes Campers of Southern California out of the city of industry. And today I'm gonna to give you a full exterior walkthrough of the 2020 HQ12. So let's get into this, let's get going. So here we are once again in this beautiful California sun going over the HQ12. And where do I always like to start my walkthroughs? The front, I love the front of our units. Just the aerodynamic feel of it, the shape of it, the design, the look, I love these units. The solid look of it, the solid feel of it, everything. So as always, we're gonna start off with our rock guard. We have an angled rock guard. This is made of an aluminum diamond plate with a European cut, and that's what it is. Like I said, it's not the standard American cut, it is a European cut. So it's got that downward angle and the backward sloping back here. Again, so that way if you're throwing rocks off, those rocks are gonna hit here and deflect off. It's not like, again, with like a, a rounded unit or a flat unit where the rocks might hit and bounce back, hit your vehicle. This is designed to deflect away and help protect your investment, your vehicle that is. So then we have our upward slopes. And again, the silver part, again, is made of an aluminum composite. So you have a sheet of aluminum, your composite material and another sheet. So again, you have that strength, you have that rigidity, and you have that lightweight material. As we travel up, now you may notice, obviously it doesn't travel as high as some of the other HQ models, such as the 15, the 17, the 19, or even the 21, because this is a pop top. But right here at the top, like I said, we do have, as usual, our very bright LED light bar. Again, we still have four of them all the way around, one on the front, one on the back, and on the sides, on each side. And then you can see we have two clips and the locking clips is what keeps that pop top down. Now, we do just have clips in place right now. If you can, if you want, you can actually place a lock in here if you'd like to, but these have pins. So I'm gonna leave those pins in there right now until we're ready to open up our lid and we're gonna cover the rest of this on the way around. So as I come down, we have as always our first storage compartment. Now this one does still have the lock on it, uh, but again, the newer ones are not gonna have the lock because again, for fire, uh, fire regulations, that way they have easy access to the compartment. This has a bracket um, for two five gallon jerry cans. And of course, if you look, there's always room farther back in the corner for more storage. So if you wish to use that, you can use it for fuel cans, uh, you can use that, the bracket for water cans, um, or you can take the bracket out and use it for whatever storage you'd like maybe a small generator, wood, whatever you wanna do, that's your prerogative, obviously, once you get things going, okay? As we come into the other compartment over here, you open this up, and that is our propane compartment. Now, the units do come with uh, two 20-gallon propane tanks, but you can fit the 30-gallon propane tanks. That's the much taller ones, and those come to, oh, maybe yay, about here or so, once you put them in. We have our flip gauge, so this way, you can switch from one tank to the other. And then on the bottom in the base, there's ventilation holes. So that way, if something happens and you have a propane leak, the vent holes are there to allow the propane to leak out. And there's also a new vent tube in the corner. And that's a newer feature that's coming on our 2020 models. You have a vent tube in the corner. And what it does is that grabs air, fresh air from the outside. The fresh air comes up, floods that compartment and flushes it downwards but that is our propane compartment. Now here on, uh, on our draw bar, again, our draw bar as part of our frame or our frame is a very large, heavy duty, solid steel. This is a hot dipped galvanized steel frame. It would take a lot of abuse to cause some damage to this frame, unless you are doing something you shouldn't do with the frame, like welding things, or drilling a lot of holes right in a row. But this is a heavy duty steel frame that runs from the draw bar all the way back. And it's a tubular frame. It's not a C channel, very strong, durable frame. So as we come here on the tongue, we also have right off the bat, you see our handbrake. We have a mechanical handbrake. Here's our adjustment for right here with our cable. And so the mechanical handbrake comes in very handy when you are disconnecting from your unit. You should still utilize a wheel chalk, um, but when you're parking real quick to get disconnected, you can set your handbrake. Um, it comes in very nicely. Also, when you're trying to connect, you can release your handbrake, 
your unit will roll forward a little bit. You can kind of, you can give it a little push with your knee to get everything hooked up, but that makes it very nice as an option. I'm holding here our Anderson plug. The Anderson plug is a 50 amp plug. It's a two prong plug, a positive and a negative. And so that would be for something like if you get one of our portable solar panels. Um, so it's got the same Anderson plug on it. It plugs right in, or you can even have an Anderson plug attached to your vehicle, um, and then you can charge your battery this way. This goes directly to the battery. I'll set this off to the side. Then we also have a standard, obviously, the seven pin connector. A seven pin connector is gonna turn on all your lights, run your turn signals, um, do all your running lights on the vehicle. It's gonna do all that fun stuff. Now, one of the nice things about these units, and I'll show you when we get to the back, is we have reverse lights. Not a lot of trailers have reverse lights on them. They got a red stop light and a yellow blinker light. That's it. In some cases, they only have one light. We actually have three lights. We have a turn signal, we have a reverse light, and we have a stop light as well. And we'll see that when we get to the rear. Another cable that we have down here is our emergency brake. So the idea is you connect this up, this cable here, to your, your receiver, onto your, uh, onto your vehicle. You hook it separately from your chain. Don't attach this to the chain because the idea is to pull this key. This is a key, key pulls out, and then the battery power will set the brakes. So the idea is if something happens and the trailer breaks loose and the chains don't hold for whatever reason, the chains fail, then this will pull and will stop the, bra the, uh, the brakes on the trailer to keep it from rolling. So that's our emergency brake. Then we also have our articulating hitch, okay? Now this is, we don't use a ball. We don't use a ball hitch. We use this, we use this Y hitch right here. So on your receiver where the ball would be, you take the ball out, this would be attached to that right there. And then what you do is you back up, I'm gonna pull this off so I don't lose a spring. There's a spring and a washer there too. I'm gonna set these right here. And so what you do is you pull the pin, you back your vehicle up. This is our poly block. So this will slide over the poly block. The pin will go in place. You'll use the cotter pin. Now I don't have the spring and the washer in place. So I'm gonna do it how it's supposed to be just so you are familiar with it. I don't wanna do it incorrectly and mess you guys up. So I got the spring and the washer on here. So that way when I put it in place, as you can see, I'm not burying this T-handle into the lid. Now I can get in there with my hands, with my fingers, to pull it out when time comes. But this allows us for swiveling, for turning. This gives us 70 degrees of rise or lift right here with the poly blocks when we're going through dips and valleys. And then this whole knuckle right here will pivot. Now this whole thing will actually pivot 360 degrees. That way, if while you're driving, so your vehicle, like say your vehicle's twisting this way and your trailer's twisting this way, it allows the truck and your trailer to be doing this and this and this. Lots of articulation involved in all of this. Now, part of this unit that you cannot see is this inner piece right here. There is a very large heavy duty spring inside of this. And if you are off road, this little clip will actually pull out of the way. So now you have about an inch or so of gap. So the idea is if you're off-roading, when you stop, your trailer keeps coming forward, this very large spring will take the brunt of that hit rather than it slamming into your vehicle, okay? So that is the idea of that heavy-duty spring. So one last thing here we've also included, we've added these little fins. The chain used to be welded to the frame here. Well, we changed that, we put a fin in here, and we've attached, and you can look, I mean, this is a really huge, heavy duty chain. Most companies do not use this large of a chain, and we do use that. So when you do hook up your chains, do make sure that you crisscross your chains. Don't do straight across, crisscross them, so that way it's kind of like a cradle if something happens and it falls and catches. One last feature here on the front, and if you even want some more information on this feature, is our jockey wheel. Please be sure to check our library. I have done a video on our jockey wheel, but this is our XO750 model. This is the black one. And so there's different categories, there's different adjustments to it. This handle right here, if you pull this handle, this will actually make this entire assembly slide up and slide down. 
When you pull this handle, then this whole assembly will swivel up out of the way. So really, you can kind of do however you would like to get it up out of the way. I like to crank up the whole wheel, lift up the whole thing, swivel the whole thing out of the way. But let's say when you get to where you need to be, it's too low, too high, whatever, you still have this adjustment. And again, and on the video, you'll see it on the video, there is a line of demarcation here. You can't see it on the black models, but realistically speaking, this unit, this jockey wheel is set too high for us to be rolling it at this time. If you roll it, this creates a weak point, you'll damage it, and then it'll be user error and will not be covered under warranty. So make sure, again, watch our video, go into our series, watch the video on where it should be, but it should be much slower before you start rolling it. So we're going from here, we'll keep on going around the corner. So as we continue around the corner, we come around the first corner, so now we're on the entry side of our trailer or the passenger side of your vehicle. And as we look down, as always, we got our rock guard, our nice, durable, tough rock guard that's here to protect the edge of our trailer. So if we're off-road, we're in a little deep valley or something, the idea is this is gonna hit first and protect this. Now, you might end up occurring with some damage here, but it's not as if you don't have those rock guards and you're really gonna tear up your edge. And as we go underneath, we also have our stabilizer bar. So we have four stabilizer bars, one on each corner. Um, it lowers down, it swings up out of way. And then there's a nut right here that extends the bar. You can see the bar extended. So that way we have it in place making contact. As you travel up the wall, again, we still have our diamond plate. We have our diamond plate all the way along and around our unit, as well as our aluminum composite. If we look up a little bit, we have a floodlight. We got a floodlight here, and we also have, just a little bit higher, our awning. So we have our awning that pulls out. I think it's about a 10-foot awning that pulls out. It gives you a lot of nice shade, which is really nice. And then right here, we have one of our very tough, very durable polymer uh, dual-pane windows. Um, it's got a tint to it. It's a dual tint on the inside, outside, so that it helps with glare. And one of the really nice features of these, these windows is it really makes things quiet inside. Um, right now, this is in a partially closed uh, configuration, so you can actually leave it open a little bit like this so you can get some airflow, but it also closes and locks tightly, and it really actually blocks out a lot of exterior noises. So those early mornings, you're out camping, maybe you're near some kids or something, they're making a bunch of noise, not gonna hear them. It's, it really is very quiet inside. So as they come down a little bit, we have our first compartment. So with the compartment, and sometimes people are very confused on this, they don't understand. Very easily, these lift up and you give it a half twist. And it doesn't matter which way you half twist it, but it's a half twist to open it up. So in our first compartment, you know I'm gonna point out something real quick too, is our doors. The old doors, the old style of doors, did not have this grid on it. So the doors really weren't quite as rigid. But now with this new grid, the doors actually have a little more durability, a little more strength to them, and they're a little bit more rigid. So here we have our pull-out kitchen. So there's a release clip here. I'm gonna hit the release clip. I'm gonna pull this out. Now you see there's two handles. One handle is for a prep table. So there's a small prep table right here. This is the pulling handle, and I pull it out. Now on top of it here, I've put on our leg. So this is a newer style leg. This is actually a magnetic leg. So you can see a magnet here, so watch, I'll stick it. I have to stick it underneath. So it'll stick underneath to the bottom, and then it's got a release clip, and this was extend. The older ones had a T-bar, um, and they didn't work quite as well as they could have. This is a much more durable uh, application for a strength bar. I'm not gonna put it in place, because we're just talking about this real quick. So I'm gonna just set this ah, right there. On top, we have our prep table and we have these two wings. Now these wings are support wings. So I'm gonna open this up, and you see the wings come out, and that's a support wing for the table. So this is your prep table. You can use this to prep your food. Um, you can use it to serve food. Um, you can even get a couple stools and utilize this area as your eating area. That way you're eating outside. Maybe you don't have to worry about bringing another table. You already have a table, essentially. So we have our three burner stove on this. We open it up, a Dometic three burner stove, one, two, three burners. This is an electric start. So it works off the batteries in the units. And so you have to push these to get the fuel to start. That's our three burner stove. We have our sink area. Now right now the faucet is in the down position. 
So you just raise it up to whatever position you want. It's down so that way it doesn't hit this right here. So this is a gravity drain. So what happens is when you run your water, you toss a bucket underneath. Now there is a hose that comes out underneath. See this white drain hose? You drop a bucket there and then you catch your gray water and you dispose of it appropriately. Um, you know, you disperse it as best you can. So that is our drain and our sink. Now, to get the gas to the stove, there's a couple connections. So I'm gonna have the camera come over here and underneath is two connections. So the silver one or the gold one, sorry, not silver, the gold connector, that's gonna be your gas line hookup. The other connector is your water hookup. Now the gas line is gonna come out of the same place underneath the sink as the drain hose. There is a rubber line, let me see if I can find it in here. There we go. The rubber gas line, this will come over, plug into your gas, and that's how you get gas to your stove. So then what you wanna do is you wanna get your water hose. Now the water hose is usually stored in here. You can put it wherever you wanna put it. So, but the water hose, the little trick to this is when you hook up the water hose is you wanna hook it up to the dry side first, the sink side. Because otherwise, if you hook it up to the wet side, to the unit, and the water pump is on, you're gonna start shooting your water everywhere. Now, unless you wanna do that, maybe shoot your kids, shoot your friends, I don't know, whatever you wanna do. That's what you wanna do. You wanna go to the dry side first, and then plug into the unit. Now, the same goes for disconnecting. You wanna disconnect from the unit first, and then disconnect from your sink. Otherwise, you can get a, you're gonna lose some of your water. Someone's gonna be wet, whether it be you or somebody else, I don't know, but you don't wanna lose your water. Now, like I said, the electric start for the stove needs to be hooked into the batteries. So our units used to have a plug somewhere here with a rubber grommet to help protect it. So we removed that as an option and we put the plug here inside. So now it's protected, it's not out here. We don't have any holes in the outside. And so if I just open up the front door, here is the plug. So this plug, we come through a front opening here and plug right in right there. And so that's how you get power to the electric start on the stove. So I'm gonna put this away and we're gonna get moving on through the rest of the unit. So the, our next compartment is gonna be our storage compartment. Now this one doesn't pass all the way through because on the other side of this compartment is going to be a, your hot water heater. It's a six gallon hot water heater. It's propane powered and it's electric powered, but we do have our storage unit. So here we have, um, we have our wrench for our stabilizer legs. Um, I have you know, our 30 amp plug here um, and a few other uh, you know, accessories, solar or a, uh, our sewer hose and all that stuff. Now, one of the other options, one of the other features that's here in the front of this compartment is a bubble level. So you can obviously put in a bubble level somewhere else as well, but you at least already have one bubble level mounted in your unit here in the front of it. So there's different things that you can do. So as we travel along, as we come along, we come into one of our two external speakers. This is a marine grade speaker. There's one here. And you can see one over here at the back of the unit as well. So that way you can turn on some music, you can have some music while you're sitting outside. Um, and then we have another window, obviously dual pane, and another floodlight. So again, we have two floodlights on this side to kind of light up your area. One is in the kitchen area, kind of help light up your kitchen area, and one is in your general area. And then we have two plugs. Now this one, these black ones, these are a marine grade plug and it's got a rubber cover to it. And this is a 12 volt plug. So if you have a, uh, like a, a cigarette lighter accessory, you can plug it in here, or maybe a small inverter, whatever it may be. You can plug in here with your 12 volt plug. And then next to it, this blue one, this is a GFCI plug. This is a ground fault current interrupter. Now to get this one to work, um, you either need to be plugged into a generator or you need to be plugged into a, um, a shoreline, a 30 amp shoreline to make this work. So that's what this is. This will not work off of the inverter, all right? Now just below that, this is a prep table. Now I have already unlocked this, 
okay? That is how this will stay secured. So this is just gonna close up right now, but usually this is locked. I've already unlocked it, but you open it up and this is a prep table. Let's get our bubble wrap out of here. And so there's even a little area, let me fill this out, where you can kind of set your drinks or whatever. It's not deep or anything, but it's got a, a line of demarcation so that way it doesn't slide anywhere. But you can use this as a prep table. Um, you can use it as a storage table. I always suggest, I, I, I think what's really nice, what I've seen a lot of people do when I camp, is they'll set a crock pot on a table outside, they'll plug into it with their plugs, and then they'll have dinner cooking while they're off doing their adventures. They're hiking, they're, they're biking, or they're swimming, whatever they're doing, they'll have dinner going in a crock pot here on this, which is kind of cool, because then you pull up, you got your awning out, you got your table set, you just serve up dinner, you're already right here. But that's our prep table. I'm just gonna push that up right now. And then right here we have our solar light. This is our, our solar light. So there's a solar panel up here on the top. It collects the sun, obviously, charges the battery. And then you have the little light area. Now, this is our on-off switch, and this is a motion sensor. So in the evening hours, let me see if I can get it to work. It's kind of bright out here. There we go. In the evening hours, the light will come on, but it won't be quite as bright. It'll be more of an ambient light. But as you approach, as you walk closer, the motion sensor picks your movement up, and then it goes to this bright setting right here and that is our motion sensor light for your security. So as we're continuing on, we have our door. It's a very special door, it's an Australian made door. There's actually a gas vent down here at the base of it. So that way it allows if there's a gas leak inside, it's actually able to vent. Now one of the other things that I wanna point out is this clip here and this bar here. Now on most of the models, most of all of our HQ models, the way to secure the door is by using this ring here. Well, we don't do that with this model because of where things kind of set. So this actually, if you kind of come around this way, when you open the door, this bar comes off. There we go, back here. And actually hooks up. And that's what's going to secure the door into place. Now, again, one of the other key features that is on this model is our step light. So as you come into the unit, if you look, I already have the step light on. You can see it's lit up, you know, the switch is right here for it. And again, it's one of the, the neat features that I really appreciate and like is because like I said, if I'm gonna go out and it's daylight out when I'm leaving out to do an activity, maybe a hike, a bike ride, or maybe I'm going into town or whatever I'm gonna be doing, I wanna make sure I have some lights on when I come back. And so actually I can turn on this light, but when I open up the screen, now I'm gonna go ahead and release the screen again. And again, with the screen, it's this little lever. You push that up and releases it. And so when I close the screen, if you can see the light there, there's a sensor. So when the screen closes, that light shuts off. So when you come back from your activity and you open up your door or open up your screen, your light comes on. So that way you can leave on a, uh, an entry light essentially without draining your battery while you are gone. One of the really nice features that I really like and appreciate with this unit. So with this, like as always, are heavy duty screens. So when you close it, it sounds like a closing screen, not one of those typical just aluminum bodied screen with maybe a piece of plastic across here, or in some cases I've seen nothing or a piece of plastic across the center, but it's not very secure. And so we have this aluminum screen that goes all the way down, kind of a security screen. And it's a really tough, it's really durable. Now, if you have an animal, a dog or something, or uh, you have a kid, you, they might tear through this screen material, it is screen material, but they're not gonna get through the aluminum frame that's on the other side. Unless you have a dog that's really destructive and tear stuff apart, then that's a good chance. Now, one of the things, one of the really key features to our, our screens is they have three points of contact. And so as I activate it, I'll push it out. Here you can see, here's a tooth. It connects here, connects here. So when I close the screen, like on standard screens, it's gonna be nice and secure here in the middle, but it's gonna be loose up on top with a lot of play and loose on bottom. But when I set the pin, you can see the pin, now there's very little play. You're not gonna get this open because you have that security pin that's there in place. And also, the key, the lock is on the screen. It's not on the door. You can see the opening here for the door. 
And so the way the door seals or the way the door connects to the screen is there's a locking pin here and then there's a locking pin down low as well. And so that will lock into the screen. So if you already have the screen door locked, maybe you locked the dog in there while you went off and you left the door open for some activities or whatever. Hey, now it's time to go, let's leave. So I'm gonna release the bar back here, release the bar and I'm gonna close my door and now I'm good to go. I'm ready to go and do my activity or whatever I gonna, I'm gonna do for that day. So that's one of the really key, really nice features to our door, a nice solid door with our window. Um, it just again, one of the really nice features that come along with our system. So I'm gonna come this way just a little bit more. Like I said, this is one of our exterior marine grade speakers I pointed out. Uh, again, we have a small little rock guard. And then as you're down there, if you take a look over, we also have our electric step. Um, so we have our steps right there. It comes out, it's two steps. It's got a little electric motor that will bring it out and make it available to you. So while we're here, before I move on to the back, what I'd like to do is to point out our solar panels up on the roof. So as we look up, we get up there, our units, our HQ models have two solar panels, one on each side of the unit. Uh, depends on the mounting, depends on the amount of roof space. Obviously the HQ-12 has a little bit less roof space than say an HQ-19, but it has two solar panels, one on each side. Each solar panel will give you a 150 watts of power for a total of 300 watts. Now those will feed into the battery charge controller and that battery charge controller is gonna feed into our AGM batteries. Those AGM batteries have about 100 amp hours apiece, and it's gonna charge, as long as the batteries need to charge, the charge controller will allow the batteries to be charged off of our two solar panels. So here we are on the back side of our HQ-12. Now I've kind of moved around the corner a little bit just so we can get out of this hot California sun because it's really bright out here. But we want to make sure that we cover the back areas. So some of the key features that we have back here, for instance, right off the bat is our two spare tires. Uh, this unit, the HQ-12, we're running Falcons on this unit. Um, it's got a nice stiff wall. It's got uh, a 10 ply rating for the sidewall of, this, of these tires. Uh, 265, 75, 16 tires. Uh, again, two spares. As we look up a little bit, we got another window. That window is actually gonna be our kitchen window for our interior kitchen in this unit. And then just above that, we have, again, another LED light bar, very bright LED light bar. So if you come back down, on our way back down, we're gonna come across our lights. So like I mentioned, we have two reds. One is for your stop lights, one is for your turn signals. And then as always, like I said, your reverse lights. These reverse lights are really handy if you're in a dark area and you're backing up. This lights up your area really well, which makes it a really nice feature to have. As you come down, we have a turnbuckle. We have our recovery hooks. This has about, this is a three quarter recovery hook and I believe it's got about a 9,000 pound recovery rating. If you get stuck into an area, this allows you, whoever's gonna be towing you out, to hook into that to help pull you out without attaching to uh, some other part of the frame or something you should be attaching to. And then just behind that, we have, again, our stabilizer bar. So underneath our unit here, here at the reverse or at the rear, you see we have two tanks. These are your black and gray tanks. They both have a 26 gallon capability. And so one of the newer features we've been running for a little bit now is we've connected the two tanks into a singular discharge, a singular sewer discharge. Uh, we used to run two separate hoses for each tank, but now we have it combined. So the one larger tank on the left, that's going to be for your, gray, your black tank. So what you're gonna do is you're going to open up the valve, you're gonna hook into your sewer where you're gonna uh, be at the dump station. You're gonna open up your black valve and dump your black valve. While that's going on, you're actually gonna be, be filling your black tank with fresh water at another valve, at a connection. And I'll show you that in just a little bit. So that way you can run clean water through that. Now, once you have the black tank fairly well dumped, you close the valve off of your black tank, then you open up your gray tank. Now your gray tank is gonna be your shower water, your faucet water, yeah, pretty much your shower and your faucet water. And so you're gonna be running that through. Now what that does is that helps kind of rinse out anything that might be in the tube still from the black tank flush. Once you have that drained, 
Then you close that valve, you open up your black valve again. So you keep doing that, keep flushing your system until you have a clear black tank. You don't wanna be stowing your unit with any extra particles in the black tank because then it's, it's not very sanitary. So that's the rear of our unit. That's our part of our solar stuff, or our, excuse me, our sewer stuff. We're gonna move around to the other side. So now here we are on the, what would be the driver's side of the trailer, the driver's side of your vehicle. And so now we don't have quite as much going on back here, but we do still have stuff going on. So if we look up, up top here, you can see we have an antenna. This is our radio antenna. Like I said, you do have a radio inside. Um, and so this is gonna be your antenna for it. And actually, if you look up a little bit higher, I know we've already talked about solar panels, but here's the other solar panel here off of the other side. Another one of those 150 watt solar panels. And then over here, you see one more floodlight over here, another one of those LED floodlights. And then this is another one of our windows. It's kind of in the dinette area. As I come down a little bit, we look at the very bottom down here and we have another rock guard. Again, we have rock guards all along our unit here. So we have our rock guards. And as we come up a little bit, we look, we have an exterior shower. Now I've already unlocked this. This is usually locked to be closed, but this is an exterior shower. And so it's just your standard exterior shower like you usually find. You have your hot and your cold water with your shower head. Uh, so you can stand out here, you can rinse off after a day at the beach, uh, you know, maybe a nice dirty hike or something. Um, you know, you can rinse off, stand out here. Above that, we find a vent. This is the vent tube for our uh, 16,000 BTU heater. So this is gonna be your vent, exhaust vent for that. As we come along, we start coming into many of our water fills. Now, I just mentioned just a few minutes ago about the black water tank fill, and that's what this valve is here. So you'd use a key, you would pull off this cap, and you would use a black water tank hose. Now, when you are camping, when you're out there, you should have two water hoses. Now, at most dump stations, they'll already have another hose there, okay? But if you, ha you should have a designated drinking water hose. Usually it's a white hose, and that's gonna be plugged into here, your city water connection. You should never ever use your city water hose to put into your black water tank. You don't want that bacteria getting into your drinking water. That's a very bad thing to have happen, because then you get sick. So again, you would have a secondary hose, so when you're at the dump station, you would take that hose, put it inside, turn on the water. You don't want to put it on full blast because otherwise you could possibly fill up that 26 gallon tank before you're ready to dump it. You turn on the water so you can let it fill. You dump your tank, close it, allows it to fill. You dump your gray, you come back, it's been filled up, you dump it again, so on and so forth. That's where you're going to be doing that at. As we come this way, as I just mentioned, our city water connection. Now again, I'm really excited about this feature. We did not have this feature on our units. Again, the, the, the engineering and the design and research for our units takes place in the Australian Outback. And again, there's not a lot of water spigots in the Australian Outback. Um, so this is definitely a, a United States kind of type thing, as well as maybe other countries, just not so much in Australia. And so this allows you, if you go to an RV park, now obviously our units are designed for boondocking, but occasionally you might have to go to an RV park. So you, this allows you to hook up and bypass your water pump. Now again, this will only bypass your general water tank. Your general water tank is your 50 gallon water tank. That's gonna be running your toilet, it's gonna be running your shower, that's gonna be running your sinks, okay? So it's gonna be bypassing your general water tank only. It will not be pass bypassing your drinking water tank. Now again, there are two water tanks. You have a drinking water tank and you have a general water tank. Your general water tank is a 50 gallon, that's five zero gallon tank. And again, that runs your toilet, your shower, and your sinks. Your drinking water tank, which is a separated tank, there's, it's a 16 gallon tank. So you overall have 66 gallons of water, separate tanks, separate water pumps, separate water lines. You do not want to connect them. I have had people ask me, hey, can I connect them? You don't want to do that. You can get away without washing your hands, you know, brushing your teeth, you know, using the toilet, taking a shower, you'll survive. You can figure out something else. You can't survive without water. You need to have water to drink. Otherwise, you can die of dehydration. You get very ill. So don't ever mix these two. Keep them separate. Because what happens with the 16-gallon tank, when you turn on the pump, 
it's gonna go through a triple filtration system. It's got like a charcoal filter, a paper filter, like a sand filter. And so it goes through those triple filters, comes out a different spigot. And so that way you have your drinking water. And I'll show you the filters when we get inside. But again, this is, this is where you wanna keep it. So if you can get to a water, you're at boondocking, you get to a water source, you're able to get water put inside, this is where you're gonna be putting it inside. Now, one of the other features that's right here, again, is another marine grade 12 volt plug. Okay, so it's got the rubber cap on it. And so my thought is if there, and I know that they make 12 volt pumps out there. You can drop the hose from the 12 volt pump into your water source or bucket, whatever you get your water in and run it in here. That way you can fill it that way um, or whatever you can do to get your tanks filled if you're out boondocking and you don't have a city water connection close by. So as we continue forward, we have the cover. This is the cover to air our hot water tank. So again, this is a 16 gallon, excuse me, my mistake, not 16, one six. It is a zero six, a six gallon hot water tank. And so this is gonna run off of either propane or electricity, your electricity being your shoreline. And so that's what this cover here is. This is our 30 amp uh, shoreline power. Okay, so you would plug into that. Um, and that's how you get your power, either whether you plug into a shoreline or into a generator. That's how you're gonna plug into here. And then this front cover right here is gonna be where, it's gonna be the back side of your kitchen for one. So you have a little bit of storage back here, but it's also a household style uh, GFCI plug, or not GFCI, uh, breaker cabinet. So we have the breakers, we have AC input, um, inverter input, water heater, and our GFCI plugs. So we have a nice professional home model, home style cabinet that goes here in the front of this unit. So that way if we have something blow with those more powerful units, we have that here. And again, we also have our another rock guard here on the front half of this unit. Okay, so now that we've gone through the unit, we've gone all the way around. Now what we wanna do is we wanna deploy the roof. We wanna open it up. So that way we can go inside and look at the inside stuff. Now there's four clips all the way around. There's two in the front, one on each corner, and there's two here on the back on each corner. Now I've already removed the front one, so I'm gonna show you what I do to remove the rear ones, okay? Now what I usually will do when I close it, as you can see, I've run it through the hole and I've closed the clip over the handle. So I'll undo it and then I'll unlatch it. Now here's the thing, this little doohickey here, this little clip, is actually adjustable. So what I like to do, because sometimes what'll happen when you go to open it, this will drop back down, and when you raise it up, it'll catch. And I don't like doing that because it makes it very hard. So what I'll do is I'll push it all back up, I'll take my pin, and I'll run my pin through, back through the hole, and I'll close it over it. See now, that catches it. That keeps that up, and that catches it, and keeps it from causing any issues when I go to open it. So now I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna do the other side, and I'm gonna do the same thing. And I always try to be very consistent with doing it so that way it's always the same. And see, when I have it in this position, let's see, when I do this again here, see, again, it's not gonna go anywhere. See? All right, so there you have it, the last give in place. We're ready to go down the road. And there, that brings us to the very end of our exterior walkthrough. I hope this is able to answer all of the questions you may have about the HQ12 and its exterior. If you have any questions, please be sure to send us an email at info at blackseriescamper.com. That's info, I-N-F-O, at blackseriescamper.com. Again, this is Jim Buck with Black Series Campers of Southern California out of the city of industry saying we'll see you out there. Take care. How you doing, everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Series Campers of Southern California out of the city of industry. And we hope that you enjoyed the last video of a series that we just got finished watching. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to ask to make sure that you please like and subscribe to our channel so that way you can see all of the videos that are coming up in our series. So make sure that you get out there, you smash that bell up in that corner up there. And again, this is Jim Bot with Black Series Camper. So we hope you enjoyed that video. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.